the, the destruction of those houses and some other effects are detailed in the account, which is on these pages of the book. Um, you start with the, over here with the day, uh, this is a 14th day, and the, the tsunami came in on the night of the eighth day, so that's the six days of transit. There's a weather report down here. There are the names of, of three senior ministers who, not, who uh, officially checked the document. And then you have the, the, the account here. You can, get, you can get flammable things that float. Maybe it, for them it was whale oil. We don't know. But in any case, then they go on and describe how they're operating like FEMA. They, um, <laughs> but I don't mean that in a pejorative way. I mean, they're, 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 they say that there are, um, you know, this is in the in dead of winter, and it turned out that this year was a bad year for crops, and that people were hungry. And so they went, these samurai magistrates went to what, um, they, they went to their storehouse rice. They call it the Okuramai, the honorable storehouse rice. It means rice they collected for taxes. And they distributed rice to a little, it says. It doesn't say what a little means. To 159 people. Um, and then they also went to the uh, kind of the commissioner for public lands and said, we need to cut down some, some trees to get low-grade lumber to to rebuild um, houses uh, to help these people who, who lost their, their homes. And, uh, and the final part of it says that nobody died from the, uh, or was hurt. Um, the part that, that talks about the, the, the losses uh, from the waves themselves is, is reproduced here. And so this is, a, this is one of those little nuggets that, that that uh, you then use to try to estimate the size of the tsunami in Japan, to estimate the size of the earthquake here. One way to think about that is to run the experiment in reverse. Start with a, have a tsunami in the Western Pacific, generated in the Western Pacific, and have it come to Cascadia. Okay, so here we have the tide gauge from Crescent, in Crescent City, California. The same gauge recording the tsunami from 1952 Kamchatka which is a magnitude 9 earthquake, plus or minus, and then a, a much smaller earthquake, magnitude 8 earthquake, in southwest Japan, down near Tanabe, in, in, um, in 1946. And you can see from these, the heights gauged at Crescent City, which itself is something of a tsunami amplifier, that it would be hard to wash away houses with these little wiggles here, but that you might start to do it with, with the currents that could be set up by by um, these, fluctu these oscillations that get to practically two meters trough to peak uh, from the 1952 tsunami. So this, this is a seat of the pants way of, of, of saying that the earthquake here, uh, responsible for the washing away of those houses in 1700 in Kogasaki was more likely a nine than an eight in round terms. And then I mentioned that, that um, attempts were made to quantify this in Japan, coming up with actual height estimates at the shore um, for each of these places based on the accounts of, of damage and, and flooding. And it's, um, this, 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 this work is published in, uh, several years ago in a in, in journal of geophysical research. Kenji Satake was the lead. And then Kenji used, his, used computer simulations of the tsunami matched in gray, the simulated heights came up with the with the best fit to the that he could to the to the estimated heights tsunami heights in Japan, and and magnitude nine was with a full length rupture was the simplest way for him to explain it. Well, this sit this sat fine more or less with North American scientists, but. Um, when the findings were first, the Japanese link with North America was first announced in the, in the uh, uh, middle 1990s, 1996, a number of us were skeptical that, that in fact the tsunami came in 1700 came from here. At the time, there was uh, radiocarbon, the, the, how do I say it, that the, um, the, the link between radiocarbon time and and uh, calendar time for the for these decades hadn't been 
very firmly established because there was a problem with contamination of some of the samples that had been used to, um, to, to uh, show uh, what the radiocarbon age should be for something that's, say, from 1700. And, um, but fortunately, um, David Yamaguchi, uh, who many of you may know uh, for his work in dating by tree ring methods, a pair of, of Mount St. Helens eruptions, um, the set W eruptions in, in, in uh, now pinned to, I think, autumn of 1479 and, and something 40, 18, uh, 1481 or 82. But D David had taken an interest in this Cascadia work. And in the late 80s, he'd gone out to western red cedar snags like this. And he'd gone ahead and, and, uh, and cut big pieces out of them. And then he'd been able to match the ring width patterns in those trees to, um, to samples that he got from trees that had been cut, live trees cut down by Weyerhaeuser, or cut trees that had been live to Weyerhaeuser gum, in, or at Willapa Bay in 1986 and 87. So David had a master barcode of, of lean years and fat years for these trees showing up as narrow and wide rings. And then he, he figured that these these standing dead trees would sh part of, they would share a part of that barcode, and so he positioned it, positioned the samples year by year to see how the match worked, and and where he came up with a really strong match that that didn't work in any other uh, was, wasn't rivaled by any other match. Then he 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 assigned dates from the Weyerhaeuser trees to these standing dead trees. <coughs> 